Hey, everybody. This is your captain speaking, and I'm so happy to be with everybody tonight. I hope you've all been very well, that your lives are thriving, that your hearts are overflowing with love. And yes, if you're new here, my name is Matthew Stelsner, and I like to talk about the joy of astrology. That's right, how astrology can make your life better, happier, richer, deeper, more filled with magic and meaning. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'd like for each of you to have, the gift of astrology, where your life gets better the more you hang out with it. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's been a little while. I hope everybody's been well. A uh, lot's been happening here for your captain. My life has radically changed, and I'm super grateful for everything that's happened. But wow, it's been pretty intense, I have to say. Uh, yeah, uh, just one year ago, I was living in California. I was not married. I did not have a baby. <laughs> and yeah, now I'm living in Santa Marta, Colombia. I am married, and I do have a baby. And so that's why you haven't heard from me in a while. <laughs> a lot's been happening. And yeah. I want to connect, though. I feel like I'm kind of settling in. Our boy is now four and a half months old. I can't believe it. And yeah, I'm starting to find my way here, starting to come out of the bear cave a little bit. And yeah, and I want to give you some updates on what's going on astrologically, astronomically, you know, with our friends in the sky. And I want to get right to it because there's a big thing happening this Wednesday, the 21st. I want you to mark it on your calendar and set the intention with me to get out under the sky for sunset and then to look above where the sun sets to find the brightest object in the sky, the crescent moon, followed by the second brightest object in the sky. That's Venus. And also, I think it depends on when you're checking them out, but Mars will also be there, which is sometimes the third brightest uh, object in the sky. A lot of times Jupiter's brighter. And actually, I think that's the case right now, but Mars is pretty bright, pretty darn visible. You won't have a hard time finding them. And yeah, I want to encourage you to make it uh, a kind of sacred pilgrimage to be with what? The solstice. The 21st is the solstice. And therefore, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, it's the longest day of the year. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, you're in the shortest day of the year. But it's a really sacred moment, the solstice moments. And I think they're a really good uh, moment to celebrate and honor with ritual and magic and love. And so, I guess I want to encourage you to go out with a loved one, a friend, a family member, or all of the above, and try to go to someplace special in nature. What's your favorite place to see the sunset? Go there. And then right after sunset, you know, about 30, 40 minutes later, you should be able to see Venus start to shine bright. And not too long after that, maybe 45 minutes after sunset, you should be able to see Mars. And the moon, of course, will be the first to be seen, most visible. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty awesome. A moon, Venus, Mars, triple conjunction happening on the summer solstice. It's in the sign Leo. It's a super summer celebratory energy, and I hope you're feeling it. The Venus-Mars conjunction is a kind of dance party energy. It's a, yeah, Mars lights a fire and gets things moving. Mars lights a fire and gets things moving, and Venus brings the music. Venus brings the beauty. Venus brings the swing of the hips. You know what I'm saying? And it pulls your lover closer and you start to move to the music. You know what I'm saying? I don't know about you, but I've been playing more music recently and playing more music with my baby, playing more music with my wife, playing more music altogether. You know, 
dancing in the living room. I hope you're doing some of that with your family uh, because the time is right for dancing in your street or your living room. (laughs) And so, yes, let's slow down a little bit and talk, uh, talk a little more about what's going on here. If you've been following my channel, you know that in the last few years, I've really been trying to pay attention to the cycles of Venus. You know how sometimes she's in the evening sky and sometimes she's in the morning sky, trying to be super aware of that. And and then also trying to be aware of when each month the moon conjoins Venus in what are sometimes called the Venus gates or the rose gates. These moon Venus conjunctions happen seven or eight times when Venus is visible in the western sky after sunset, and seven or eight times when uh, Venus is visible in the morning sky. This happens over a period of about 260 days. Venus is visible in the evening, and then she's uh, not visible for like 10 days when Venus moves between the Earth and the Sun. That's when Venus is retrograde. And, uh, and then she's visible for 260 days in the morning. And then she moves on the other side of the sun and is not visible for like two months, two and a half months. It usually feels like three months. You know what I'm saying? When she's just not visible at night or in the morning, can't see her. Sad. At least it is for me. I have a hard time when she's not visible. I feel better just generally when I can see her, but I've learned to ritualize and also deeply engage with those times when she's not visible. After she's gone to the underworld, they sometimes say, we sometimes say, after she's returned from the other side of the sun, she starts to be visible again in the evening sky. And so, yes, we are well along our way into the evening sky Venus gates. We're actually on Wednesday about to have our seventh Venus gate, Rose gate, uh, Moon Venus conjunction. And as I said, it's joined by Mars, number seven. This is happening actually at Venus's maximum elongation. She's highest in the sky, she's visible for the longest. Uh, If you go out this week and you wait after sunset and look for her, she'll be visible for like three hours after sunset. When she first returns from the other side of the sun, she's only visible for an hour or even 30 minutes at the beginning. But then she raises up into the sky higher and higher. And uh, yeah, that's where she is right now at maximum elongation, maximum brightness. And there will be one more Venus gate that'll happen in a month. It'll also be a moon, Venus, Mars, triple conjunction, but broader. Uh, Venus and Mars are going to be, I think it's within four and a half degrees. Let me share the chart for right now. How about that? Here we go. Here I am. Make myself a little bigger here. There we go. So here we are. I'm recording this Saturday afternoon on the 17th. It's a new moon. It's a Gemini new moon. You know, we're moving. uh, Gemini is at the the last sign of spring in the northern hemisphere, and we're just about to move into summer. And Cancer is the sign that begins the summer. And it's so, yes, we're just four days away, three and a half days away from the solstice. And right now, as I'm recording this, the moon is just three degrees from the sun. So it's a, it's a new moon moment. And you'll be, probably be seeing this uh, a day or two after I'm recording this, but maybe you can still tune into the new moon energy. I kind of feel like the new moon vibe is there right up until the Venus gate, which either happens one or two or three days after the new moon. In this case, it's three days after, but I don't know, the more I'm working with these Venus gates, I feel like that whole time period from the new moon 
to the moon Venus conjunction is just like this kind of sacred uh, beginning of the month, this sacred time for inner reflection, you know, taking a pause to just uh, integrate the month that has just ended and start to kind of clear your energy and open your heart to the energy of this new month, this new moon. And yeah, I try to really ritualize that uh, each month, the new moon especially. And so I'm kind of doing that here with y'all. I'm in my new moon uh, energy, kind of starting a new phase of my uh, creative life, uh, recording this content now as a father and as a husband, uh, which I wasn't the last time I was recording videos. So yeah, it's a very kind of new beginning feeling that I have, but I'm going to be kind of ritualizing that for the next three days, just feeling that sense of, okay, it's new, new, new times, new energy. And with the solstice, it just makes it stronger entering a new season. It's not just a new month, it's a new season. And it's also this next Venus gate, the next moon Venus conjunction. And this is um, a very kind of sacred moment in Venus's cycle. And therefore this particular Venus gate, um, the seventh Venus gate, which when you work with the metaphor of the chakras and uh, kind of tune into how each Venus gate connects to a chakra, uh, this seventh Venus gate, the seventh rose gate is connected to the crown chakra. We're going to have this eighth one next month. And when you have an extra bonus uh, Venus gate, they they call it the, uh, which gate do they call it? The uh, cosmic, cosmic, Uh, Venus gate. It's like beyond the crown chakra. It's up in your auric field somewhere. You know what I'm saying? It's super high up there. So it's like tuning into Venus high in the sky right now, super bright. She's at her maximum potency. She's heading towards her closest visitation with the earth in just, uh, I want to check this, these dates here. I want to make sure I got the dates right. Uh, Venus, um, let's see here. The last uh, evening Venus gate will be July 19th and 20th. Um, the 19th is when it's more exact, but it's still going on the 20th. And then Venus goes retrograde on the 22nd. And uh, from that point, Venus starts to drop lower and lower into the uh, sky after sunset, visible for shorter uh, periods of time until she's no longer visible and she's moving towards uh, the exact conjunction of the sun and Venus, what's called the the Kazemi, the sun-Venus Kazemi. And it's the moment when Venus gets the closest to the earth when Venus returns to her beloved. I've been thinking recently about trying to imagine Venus's love affair with the earth, just thinking about her consciousness and how in love she is with the earth. Can you imagine what the earth looks like from Venus? How awesome it must be to see that blue diamond in the sky, whether it's in the evening sky, Venus's evening sky, or Venus's morning sky. How amazing it would be for Venus to see us uh, in her cycles. And when she gets closer and closer to the earth with us getting brighter and brighter and more beautiful, this is where we're at right now. Venus is in her closing approach to what... uh, my wife and I are calling the the kiss, the Venus Earth kiss, as Venus goes retrograde and starts to appear to move backwards against the backdrop of the fixed stars. She's moving closer and closer to the Earth. And yeah, she will uh, no longer be visible in the evening sky starting around August 6th. And then it's going to be like probably 10 days, 11 days before she'll pop out and be visible in the morning sky right after uh, or right before sunrise. Uh, You'll have, you know, 
at first just a very brief window to see her, but rapidly she'll get very bright in the morning sky as she kind of moves past the earth a little bit, uh, get the right angle, and uh, she gets s- super bright and super high in the morning sky. So anyway, uh, yes. Okay, so let's take a look at what's happening here on the chart. Uh, You can see it's almost an exact new moon. And as I'm recording this, the sun is about to set. So they're close to the horizon. And if we just go ahead an hour here at sunset, you'll see that Venus and Mars here in Leo up above are high in the sky. And so I really encourage you to get out there on Wednesday, the 21st, skip ahead to the 21st. And this is when the moon joins them. And so here's the sun just entered Cancer. It's the solstice, either the summer or the winter solstice. And it's also soon after the new moon. And it's a moon Venus Mars trip conjunction. And they should be visible for like three hours after sunset. That gives you time. If you miss out on the sunset, you'll still have three hours to try to catch this. And also, if the weather isn't quite right at sunset, maybe it'll be clearer a couple hours later. It's worth going out a couple of times to try to see this because it's really rare, a Moon-Venus-Mars triple conjunction, or it's relatively rare. It happens every year or two. Uh, But yeah, this is a particularly special one because it's happening high in the sky. Venus-Mars conjunctions can happen uh, at any point, it could be when Venus is much lower in the sky and Mars is a lot fainter and both visible for a much shorter period of time. Mars is re- relatively bright right now. Venus is at her brightest. The moon will be super bright. It's a crescent moon three days after the new moon. So it's a little bigger, super bright, high in the sky, should be super striking. I encourage you to make a ritual of it, a pilgrimage of it. Uh, Venus is so much about love and intimacy. It's that once a month opportunity to really make direct contact with the sky and with Venus and the moon, and in this case with Mars. And so, yeah, um, take some time to pray, you know, reach your heart out to the sky and pray for guidance, for love, for support. With Venus, it has to do with what you love, what you desire, praying for more love in your life, praying for your ultimate heart's desire. Venus sees you. She sees you from high in the sky. She can look at you for three hours each night. She sees you seeing her, and she's so grateful. She's so grateful for the contact with you, and she wants to try to orchestrate more love and pleasure in your life. And Mars is there too, bringing kind of fire and energy and movement. It helps us take action and movement toward that which we love. It also brings more energy uh, towards you, brings that which you love towards you with greater force and attraction. And so this is an opportunity to feel more pulled towards love, towards intimacy. Venus is always pulling us towards more love and intimacy, but with Mars there, it just adds heat to it. It brings fire. It lights things up with flame. And and so it's this opportunity to kind of catch a wave of fiery love. And, And so with the moon there, it just adds this element of nurturing and caring Every month when the moon conjoins Venus, I like to ritualize how they teach us to be loving, gentle, and kind with ourselves and with others. And, and so it's, it's this opportunity to pause and kind of imagine holding yourself, holding your inner child, holding the inner child of those you love you know, or the actual child that you have like I do right now. It's this chance to embrace uh, the beloved, the beloved in the sky, the beloved in your life. And it's so yes, get out after sunset and yeah, take in the sky with someone you love. 
And if you take it in alone, then you're not so alone. You're with her. You're with Mars. You're with the moon. And and they want you to have more satisfying intimacy in your life. And it starts with them. It starts with contact with the sky. And then they help you find it in other ways in your life. Venus and Mars together particularly have to do with dancing. And I think this moment in Venus's cycle is also about dancing. When she's at her brightest, at her most beautiful and glorious as she is right now, she's already calling us to dance. She's already calling us to music and pleasure. It's just that Mars adds more heat to it more fire. And the moon brings in this kind of nurturing, caring element. The moon with Mars has to do with like fighting for what you care for, taking action for what you care for. And with Venus, it's like taking action towards what you love, what you desire, what brings you pleasure. And it's like, uh, it also uh, helps you to take more direct action in terms of loving yourself, in terms of being kind with yourself. Mars gets you moving in the direction of self-love, self-kindness, self-compassion. So it's like a paradoxical alignment. On the one hand, Mars brings its heat and its fire and its movement, where the Moon-Venus conjunction each month is more about like gentleness and kindness and kind of caring connections with those you love. Mars just makes it more alive, more moving, more uh, action-oriented. And so I want to really encourage all of you to get moving, to get dancing, to turn on the music, to get out with friends and play music together. This is the ultimate way of honoring an alignment like this. And the fact that it's happening on the solstice at this key juncture in the solar year I think just adds even more power to it. And so I'm feeling like this week is an opportunity to really jumpstart your love life, jumpstart your family life, get things moving more in the direction of kindness and self-love, advocacy, advocacy in the direction of self-love. Is that the way to put it? Advocacy in the direction of self-love, self-kindness, you know? So put on some music, put your hand over your heart and dance the night away, either with yourself or with a friend or a lover or a family uh, beloved and or all of that. It's a really great one for parties. It's a really great one for gatherings. I don't know if you've been feeling it the last few weeks. Venus and Mars have been conjunct for, has it been a month? Let's see. You can see back here. Or 10, 11 degrees at the end of May. So it's been three weeks or so. Like uh, two weeks ago, they got really close. So tune in. Have you been feeling more uh, alive the last couple of weeks? Have you been feeling a little sexier? Have you been feeling a little bit more like you want to get your body moving? Uh, my wife and I started uh, trying to exercise more to music in the last week. Just that impulse to put on some music and get your body moving. Anyway, whether it's jazzercise, exercise, aerobicize, you know, it's that kind of energy. Maybe you've been feeling it. It's a great wave to catch. And yes, if there's somebody you've been wanting to kiss and you see that they want to kiss you too, then I would say you should kiss each other. This is the ultimate alignment of a kiss, a Venus-Mars conjunction. And so it's the kiss between beloveds. It's the kiss between Venus and the earth. And yeah, Venus is going to stay bright in the sky for a while now. She's at her peak brightness and will continue to be. Um, Let me just go ahead here a little bit. Let's come back to now. Let's go ahead back to this day here. Yeah, of course, Leo just adds its energy of fire even more to the overall vibe. And so probably uh, this is one that maybe it's hard to just sit still and honor. Probably you got to get your body moving a little bit. Probably you got to turn on some music. Probably it's best to do it with somebody else. Call a friend, go to a concert, 
get outside, get your body moving, take some direct action in the direction of love and intimacy, fight for your right to have more intimacy in your life with the sky and with other human beings and beloved animal friends. You know what I'm saying? And so, yes, uh, let's just, uh, let me get my notes out here. Let me see what else I wanted to say before I wrap this up for today. Um, Venus and Mars get as close as three and a half degrees. They don't make an exact conjunction before Venus goes retrograde. Let's, let's go ahead a little bit and see where that happens. They're like at four degrees here at the end of June. And then a week later, they're at four degrees. And a week after that, they're at five degrees. So about a month from now, um, this is when the last Venus gate will occur here um, on the 19th and 20th of July. It will also be a moon Venus Mars triple conjunction, uh, but a broader one. Uh, and this is when Venus is starting to kind of slow down a little bit. She's going to move lower in the sky, be visible, uh, not as long. Let's go forward a little further here. Here's Venus going retrograde. Um, Venus goes retrograde on, let's see. Oh yeah, July 22nd. Here's the 27th. Let's go back a few days. Here it is. So when Venus goes retrograde, that's actually when she's on her final approach to be closest to the earth. And so for the 45 days that she's uh, retrograde, that's the time where she's closest to us in the middle of it. She's exactly between the sun and the earth. This is the moment when Venus kisses the earth and yeah, and then she pops out on the other side. If we go ahead a little bit here, you can see she's getting closer to the sun. And uh, around August 5th, August 6th, that's when she will uh, no longer be visible in the evening sky. And then go a little bit further here. The exact Kazemi is on August 12th and 13th, basically. And then she pops out in the morning sky pretty quick. Let's see. Once she gets about 10 degrees away from the sun, uh, that happens around the 19th. But really, you know, you can be sure by the time she's like 15 degrees away, which is on August 22nd or so, then you'll be able to see her in the morning sky. And I would definitely uh, encourage you to ritualize each of these moments in the Venus cycle. And I want to mention that I've got a calendar on the Venus cycle that I've created. It's got some writing that I've done and it shows where all the rose gates, the Venus gates happen and also marks the new moon and full moon. And yeah, um, has some photos that I've taken of the moon and Venus and yeah, if you're not already on my mailing list, my email list, which you can find through the link below in the box or by going to my website, matthewstelsner.com, if you sign up for my email list, then you can get uh, uh, access to this calendar. It's an online calendar on my website. And so, yeah, if you're interested in that, sign up on my newsletter and also know that I've got a promotion that's about to begin and there'll be a special promotional offer that you'll be able to take advantage of discount on my readings. And so I will send that out to people on my email list. So email list, so be sure to sign up and also be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. If you're uh, enjoying this content, love to have you continue along with us on our continuing adventures through time and space together. I hope this has been super helpful and I send you all blessings and love and light. And yeah, I'll be back with more. I want to uh, talk about the other biggest alignment that's happening this summer, which is the Jupiter Uranus conjunction. Let's just 
before I wrap up, let's just go back here. You can see, uh, yeah, right here is a good moment to look at July 11th. It's already happening. Jupiter is already close enough to be conjunct Uranus. But uh, by the time we get to July, they get within 10 degrees, and then they're really, uh, really cooking from that point forward. And it's an amazing alignment that only happens every 13 years. And it has a lot to do with breakthroughs and quantum leaps and uh, flying high with expanded awareness. And so I'll have another video soon about that. But until then, this is your captain signing off and sending you so much love from Santa Marta, Colombia, straight to your heart. Blessings, everybody. Blessings.